thank you for joining Wars of the Roses as we continue with part three, the Rosicrucian Adepts of Orders of the Universal Reformation by Manly P. Hall. The Rosicrucian Adepts, the Society of the Rosy Cross, which came into prominence in the early years of the 17th century, presented unusual difficulties to historians of that period. Although Rosicrucianism exercised a considerable sphere of influence, and an extensive bibliography has accumulated relating to the subject, there are few facts available either about the society itself or its individual members. If we may depend upon its apologist as writing for some participation in the activities of the order, the Rosicrucians merit inclusion in the adept tradition. Unfortunately, it is impossible to distinguish with certainty any of the inner circle or sovereign body of the Brotherhood. The names often associated with the original society are Johann Valentin André, a Lutheran theologian, Robert Flood, an English doctor, and Count Michael Mayer, a German intellectual, man of letters, and physician to Emperor Rudolf II. Although these men did not claim actual membership in the society, this circumstance is not in itself conclusive negative evidence. Each in some way directly identified himself with Rosicrucian projects and sought to advance the objects of the order. Andre, in his autobiography, which was published posthumously, acknowledged that he was the author of Bama Fraternitas, R.C., the original proclamation of the Brotherhood. He wrote a number of curious works, most of which appeared anonymously. This included his Christian Opolis, which will be discussed in our section, Dealing with Utopias. Flood was the principal apologist of the Rosicrucians in England, and his writings defended the existence and high motives of the society. He also compiled an extensive history of the Rosicrucians. This book is scholarly, but casts very little light on the Brotherhood. Mayer visited England about 1616 and seems to have known and collaborated with Flood. Although historical details of such intimacy are lacking, Mayer wrote a small book, now exceedingly rare, setting forth the laws and rules of the Rosicrucians. With the exception of a few cryptic remarks, however, this precious volume is disappointing. The Count's references to Rosicrucianism in general are scattered through several erudite volumes. Illustrations with curious symbols and dealing principally with alchemy. If Andre Flood and Meyer were initiates of the Rosicrucian Society, they exhibited rare modesty and renaissance about their affiliations. They were certainly extraordinary men versed in obscure arts and sciences and conversant with esoteric doctrines of antiquity as they are the outstanding examples of the general obscurity which shrouds Rosicrucianism, and most writers have assumed that these men were adepts of the order. We shall consider them as the most likely candidates for this high honor. The Hermetic schools of medieval and early modern Europe were forced by the political and religious intolerance of their times to adopt a policy of almost complete secrecy. The initiated philosophers of antiquity were publicly acclaimed for their attainments by the better informed of their contemporaries, and the adepts of the Eastern nations have always enjoyed at least a measure of preferment among their own peoples. To escape the spirit of persecution which motivated the intelligentsia of Europe, the Brothers of the Rosy Cross concealed their places of meeting, the laws and rules of their society, the substance of their doctrines, and the identity of their members. All of the early manifestos of the order were intentionally vague, consisting principally of hints and intimations. 
and the published works attributed to this school of initiates were made up in the main of symbols, emblems, and allegories meaningless to the profane. The first proclamations of the Rosicrucians did not appear in print form until 1614, and within a year a number of vigorous opponents had arisen, motivated by a variety of prejudices. These sophists sought by every means in their power to vilify and destroy the mysterious society, as not one of these adversaries had ever met or even seen, so far as he knew, a brother of the order, the attacks were of necessity directed against such statements of doctrine and policy as were contained in the original manifestos, the Universal Reformation, the Fama Fraternitas RC, and the Confessio. The printer's ink on the Fama and the Confessio was scarcely dry before Andrew Liebau, or Libabius, the principal of a college in Coburg, had two ponderous folios in good Latin, loaded with abuses against the Brotherhood, ready for the press, under the gentle heading of well-meaning reflections. He points out from their own texts that the Rosicrucians advocated broad reforms in education, religion, and government. It was, therefore, the Christian duty of God-fearing men to accuse the Brothers of R.C of inciting disrespect for the ancient honorable institutions of learning, stirring up rebellion against lawful governments, the preaching of heresy, and the practice of sorcery. For some reason, not entirely clear, Libabius did not follow in the pattern of his fellow critics, most of whom denied categorically the very existence of the elusive brotherhood. Equally strange was his sudden change of heart, for in 1616 Libabius shifted his position completely and earnestly advised all who had the opportunity to join the society. He died the same year, and his motives have never been clarified. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment. And if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Rosies. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you so very much.